You can invite sekarang. Allow 10 to 20 second punya delay.
Okay, Assalamualaikum. Dr. Dr. Aman, can we start now? Yes, kita boleh mula sekarang. Sekarang dah pukul hampir pukul 10. Dr. Amiru. Kita tunggu Dr. Amiru. Okay, hi. Assalamualaikum. Ah, okay, Waalaikumsalam. So, yeah, I give the floor to Dr. Assalamualaikum semua. Saya Dr. Aman daripada um, Institute from um, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Aman Muhammad Isam from Institute of Postgraduate Studies. So here with me uh, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Suhaili as a moderator for our 10 promo ways to GOT tips from a successful uh, graduate. So uh, Dr. Suhaili will moderate this uh, session that our presenter Dr. Al Dr. Dr. Al Zamani from Faculty of uh, Health, uh, Faculty of Sport Science. And then we also have Dr. Al Amiro from um, <coughs> graduate from uh, Faculty of Business and Management. Now he's uh, a lecturer at uh, University uh, Islamic International Islamic University Malaysia. So I give to Dr. Suhaili to introduce all our presenter and uh, to introduce herself. Okay, thank you very much guys. Enjoy the, the, the forum. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us in today's webinar. So my name is Associate Professor Dr. Suhaili Aslan and I'm the Head of Graduate Studies at Institute of Graduate Studies UITM. So in this 10 proven ways to GOT webinar, we'll have the opportunity to hear amazing personal stories from our own PhD graduates and inshallah later, we will have the chance to discuss more about the challenges as well as the secret tips to GOT. So we are humbled to have two prominent speakers as the panelists uh, today whom I believe shall enrich our insight on the topic of this webinar. So allow me to introduce our speakers. Our first speaker is Datuk Dr. Al Zamani Mama Idros. He is a consultant emergency physician at Hospital Kuala Lumpur. He was a champion of Malaysia three minutes thesis competition in year 2018. So despite working as a full-time medical officer, he successfully graduated on time for his PhD studies. So next, our second speaker is Dr. Al Amirul M.A. He is a senior lecturer at International Islamic University Malaysia. He was the first recipient of Kazana National Water Scholarship from UITM. And he was also the recipient of UITM Best Graduate Award which is MTDC Book Prize Award in year 2019 for his PhD study. So we are lucky to have, uh, to, we, we are lucky to get to hear two different perspectives from two graduates who went through totally um, opposite studying experience at UITM. So Dr. Azar was a working student while Dr. Amiro was a full-time student. So I hope that their stories somehow will be relatable to the participants out there who might be going through the same studying experience at UITM. Okay, uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the session, I, I really appreciate it if you can actually uh, type the question in the question box um, in your control panel. So inshallah later, I will try to actually post the questions to the speakers uh, during the Q&A session. Now, without further ado, I, I will begin. Uh, I believe that every PhD candidate has his or her own personal uh, experience or story when it comes to completing a PhD study. So, Dr. Azar, I think maybe we can start with you first. Um, uh, can you share with us on how it all started? Okay, what was what was your motivation that drive you to start your PhD? Uh, thank you, uh, Associate Professor um, Dr. Sohaili. Um, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to share um, a little perspective uh, from uh, my experience uh, as a PhD student at uh, UITM. So the question was that uh, how did it all uh, start and probably what was the, the second question was what was the motivation for me to do this. Um, I have to say that I am actually an accidental, I mean I'm a uh, specialist in emergency in uh, accident and emergency department right. So it's an accidental, I was an accidental PhD student because uh, it didn't start out as wanting to do a PhD. Mm, actually I was uh, actually um, an expedition doctor for Everest climbers uh, many years ago, uh, for which um, a lot of climbers, mainly UITM students and lecturers, uh, climbed uh, the uh, Mount Everest um, uh, in 2007 and 2013. And while I was there, I was um, interested uh, in uh, high altitude uh, emergency. 
uh, acute mountain sickness and all uh, those kind of things. I had some observation which I thought was interesting to study. And then when I came back, um, I applied uh, to do a master in science by research uh, with the uh, main intention to do research on high altitude. Uh, I went uh, for the interview and then uh, in the interview, I was advised to change uh, my uh, submission um, or uh, request to uh, do MSc to change it into uh, PhD. Um, I uh, was working full time, uh, but I was curious to know what it feels like to be a PhD student. And I was curious to know um, whether I could do this. Um, and knowing uh, fully well, I uh, would not be able to take uh, uh, leave because I am attached to my hospital. Uh, nevertheless, I uh, joined and then uh, I thought that if it was going to be too hard for me, I would uh, quietly um, uh, quit so that nobody would know. Tak lama sangat kan? But I had a problem along the way. Um, one day I had to represent the faculty in the three minutes thesis competition and uh, by some stroke of luck, uh, I, I actually won the competition and that put me in trouble because people knew I was a PhD student. Um, and uh, not just that, I had to represent UITM at national level and at the national level also um, I got a second stroke of luck perhaps. I, I won the national cham uh, uh, champion in the segment of science and technology and had to represent uh, Malaysia along with another uh, student uh, in Brisbane, uh, Australia. So um, I knew it was no longer a secret so I thought um, I should just give it a, a shot and try as uh, much as I could uh, to finish um, this, um, uh, this study. As for the motivation for me to keep going, I, I, it, was, it stemmed from uh, my own um, curiosity whether I could do this. I wanted to, uh, to, to show probably or uh, to prove to myself uh, that this is possible, uh, that it is also possible uh, actually to uh, complete a PhD while you are working uh, full time. So uh, I would say that was uh, m my motivation, it's as simple as that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was a very interesting story to start our discussion today. And the Mount Everest experience uh, must have been not just a trigger to, to the idea of your PhD, but I think it can serve as a power reminder to all of us to always strive and, you know, uh, and uh, try our best to reach the peak of any pursuit that we commit ourselves into. All right, so now I think we'll pass on the floor to Dr. Amirul to share his own personal journey in completing his PhD study. The floor is yours, Dr. Amirul. Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to Associate Professor Dr. Suhaili, Associate Professor Dr. Aman and Datuk Dr. Azamani. Thank you, Yadam, for having me here to share my experience and thoughts while doing my PhD. All right. Um, how could I say? Okay, my PhD journey so far is a roller coaster journey. When I first started my PhD, it goes back in 2010 when I did my diploma in office management and technology at UITM Trungano, where the late professor Tengku Yusuf Tengku Mahmud before he passed away. I was actually visiting him at the Sultan Hanur Zahir Hospital in Kuala Trungano, and before he passed away, he held my hand. And he said this to me, Amirul, I foresee you to be a lecturer, help back our community. And the next day he passed away. All right, the next day he passed away. And because of that, I am a lecturer because I believe that I should help our community because he believed in me. And I think that, you know, it is my duty to believe in myself to be a lecturer. And because of that, I decided to do my PhD back in 2016. And um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I was the first recipient representing your item for the first time to receive the prestigious award from Kazana National, which is Kazana Huatan Scholarship Award. And when I received um, the award from Kazana, it is a huge responsibility for me because first, I am representing you for the first time. 
And secondly, Kazana told me that if let's say um, they want to sponsor more your Adam student, it depends on my achievement. Hence, it is my motivation for me to finish my PhD within two years and a half so that we can prove to, to Kazana that, hey, we, the UITM students, are competitive and we deserve to get the scholarship from them. Yeah, that's all. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, that was very interesting. Um, if you can share with us, Dr. Amiro, how did you manage to secure yes and Kazana scholarship? Because I know that it is a very prestigious scholarship and, you know, they're very selective in their, you know, uh, process of application. Right now, it's very rigorous. So maybe you can share you know, just a little bit on your experience applying for the scholarship. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sahaili. Okay, uh, it happened in 2016 where I received an email from Kazana. Um, to begin with, right, um, Kazana, at that point of time, they did not sponsor your IDM. They are sponsoring prestigious universities such as UM, UKM, USM, IIUM. And when I received the email from Kazana, I was a bit shocked because I didn't apply. I didn't apply. To be honest, I didn't apply for the scholarship. So I decided to call them and ask if, let's say, it was a scam. But they told me that it wasn't a scam and you item actually proposed few names to represent your item for the first time. I went for the interview and I went for the test. Um, approximately around 10 tests that I have to sit and two rounds of interview. The last stage was with the managing director of Yazan Kazana. And they asked me, uh, he asked me this one specific question that I will still remember until now. Where he said this to me, uh, Amirul, Jani uh, Kali Pertama kita nak sponsor your item because we think that your item is not competitive as compared to other universities that we have in Malaysia. Okay. And I was like, no, coming from your item ever since diploma until PhD, of course I have your item running in me. And I told him that, you know, um, Tan Sri, this is, um, if you see that we are not competitive, at that point of time, Asia, even until now, Aziata is the subsidiary of um, Kazana National. And I know that the CEO is actually from UITM, which is Tan Sri Shazali. So I told him that, you know, uh, Tan Sri, if let's say you think that we are not competitive, why do you hire someone from UITM to be the CEO of your subsidiary? The same thing. It's the same thing that I said to him. And he said this to me, uh, kalau tak dapat scholarship ni, uh, jangan kecil hatilah. Maybe because of the tone, you know, the tone of my voice. And I went back around 11 a.m. because the, the interview finished at 11. So when I went back to my office, I received an email at 3 p.m. stating that I have secured the scholarship. Okay, I'm very much amazed by your story, Dr. Amiro, and I hope that you serve as a good reminder to the participants out there that, that uh, you know, we have to always believe in, our, in ourselves and never underestimate our potential. So, inshallah, UITM juga boleh, okay? Alright, so Dr. Azhar, I think, um, yeah, another question to you. Uh, perhaps if you can enlighten us on your challenges while doing your PhD. Um, thank you, Prof. Um, I think uh, uh, doing a PhD is just like climbing the Everest. We, we all uh, have our own uh, er, little Everest uh, to climb, and this is one of them. And as like uh, anyone climbing the mountain, you are bound to um, face the winds fall along the way. Um, and uh, it is a matter of uh, stepping uh, one step at a time to go uh, up. Uh, so the challenges in my, my Everest is the, number one is that because I was working full time and uh, working full time meaning I do not get uh, an, any special treatment uh, in doing uh, my PhD. Um, I had to take my leave uh, to carry on, uh, to carry out my experiments um, and um, uh, that means that I have to arrange uh, my duty uh, rosters accordingly so that I could uh, still uh, do this. Um, at the same time, uh, when I started my uh, PhD program, I also started uh, on um, uh, two fellowship programs. One is the Fellowship of Emergency Medicine and uh, Critical Care. And at the same time, uh, another one is a fellowship in the ultrasound for emergency medicine um, and critical care, which was also under uh, UITM uh, uh, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, so, uh, juggling with my work, doing the fellowships and doing the PhDs um, means, uh, uh, it means that there's a lot of challenges uh, along the way. 
So that's number one challenge. Number two, in terms of the machines uh, for me to use uh, in my PhD study, because um, I had to secure a multi-million dollar uh, equipment uh, to enable my experiment uh, to be carried out. So I had to approach the <laughs> big generals at the, um, uh, the Air Force, so they would allow me to use uh, the uh, hypobaric chamber. Um, and I thought that, um, uh, uh, incidentally, at the time when I proposed uh, this study, there was a brand new hyperbaric chamber uh, in UDM Subang. So I always thought that that chamber was built for me to carry out my PhD. Min <laughs> rezeki lah kan. But um, uh, to get them to trust me is another thing. So I had to approach them. So that is my challenge. But not just the machine, uh, the, the the facility. I also had to uh, ask for loan to use an uh, echocardiogram machine that I would be using to collect the data. And this means um, uh, borrowing an equipment which costs like uh, a BMW um, 3 Series um, and uh, the trust from the company. Because if I spoil it, I, uh, I have to pay that much of money. And also it's scary because when I was carrying out the experiment in the hyperbaric chamber, um, it was an electrical equipment in an oxygen environment, you know, uh, in an environment, close environment. If it, anything catches fire or explosion, that's quite uh, risky. Um, uh, we always had an ambulance standing by <laughs> while carrying out the experiment with a team, full team. So that was challenging. And also to get a uh, sparometer uh, uh, to, uh, thankfully, somehow somebody out there donated the machine for me to use. So those were my challenges. And number three is in terms of getting participants who are disciplined enough to uh, participate in my experiment that because they had to come three times. So, um, you know, if just one time they don't come, they are just like use all the data that I collected will not be useful anymore. So those were my challenges. But I think the main challenge uh, uh, that I faced was uh, with um, when I was doing this um, uh, uh, PhD study. Um, um, I actually enjoyed doing it, uh, but I had some problem um, when at one point of time my wife uh, fell ill uh, and it was uh, difficult uh, to get even the diagnosis, uh, and then she had to be hospitalized uh, for a planned uh, operation. Uh, and on the same day, I remember um, because there was already a planned um, data collection at the hyperbaric chamber, it's not easy to get a slot. Uh, so I managed to send her early in the morning um, and then I went uh, to uh, carry out my uh, experiment. Uh, and then the, uh, once done, I uh, drove back. And when I drove back, I got into uh, the ward, into the room and she just came out of the um, a toilet and she just fell and uh, I was there just in time to catch her uh, for which she would have um, fallen um, um, onto the floor and um, I don't know what would have happened. So I think everyone has their own doses uh, of challenges during the PhD. I will remember that um, uh, I had to represent Malaysia and Brisbane um, for the three minutes uh, thesis competition and um, it fell exactly on the third day of my daughter's UPSR. Um, so I had to have a family conference whether should I go, should I not go? But my wife and my family were said, you should go. And then uh, what I did was I uh, printed banners which had uh, Star Wars, um, you know, heroes on it, the Yoda, the uh, R2-D2, uh, and with the word, may the force be with you, and put it on the uh, uh, cor school corridor so that school children, when they walk into the hall, they will feel motivated and that includes my daughter. <laughs> uh, so I think um, these are largely my um, my challenges, but overall I'm uh, grateful that uh, um, they could be um, uh, overcome. Uh, and uh, I believe out there, uh, everyone uh, doing their PhD, uh, they, have, they have their own uh, winds, storms and fall as they climb the mountain before they could reach the peak. Right. I think that was really inspiring. Uh, but before that, Dr. Azan, just out of curiosity, yeah. uh, how did you manage your time balancing between uh, your career and, and your study? Did you allocate a specific time in the day to write your thesis? Okay. Um, unfortunately, I do not have the privilege or the luxury of um, choosing the time that I want. Um, basically, I think I have to thank them, Mama, uh, 
because uh, on the way back home, I will stop at uh, this Kedai Mama <laughs> and then I will just type away something. Uh, and whenever I could slot in time, uh, I mean, I um, uh, at home or, um, you know, um, at night, but it, I, I didn't actually um, believe that um, um, it should be, um, I didn't wake up uh, in the morning. I had good sleep. I think having good sleep is important. Um, and I did um, um, uh, re uh, find my ways to, to relax. Uh, I would uh, play guitar in between, you know. Uh, on weekends, I tend to go to uh, watch movies um, uh, and then uh, get on and, and, and uh, try to slot uh, things as whatever is available. So uh, I can't be choosy, uh, but I get, um, um, I use what I have. Uh, you know, whatever time that is um, available uh, for me, I try to fill them up. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. So now, uh, would you like to share with us your own PhD challenges? Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, I would say that the only challenge that I have is time. Okay, to be honest, is time. Because again, I'm racing against the clock where I am expected to finish everything within three years, of which if I fail, I have to pay everything back to Gazana double. And obviously I do not have money to pay. Okay, so when I am chasing against the clock, I do not have my me time, to be honest. Throughout my two years and a half, I didn't have my me time. I did not have my family time. All right, of which my, my dad, Pernah kata apa tau, you can just go and sleep with your PhD. Okay? Because every single every single day without fail, I will clock in every morning around 8.30. 8.30 and I'll go back around 12, 1 pagi and I'll come back again 8.30. Meaning to say that I did not have the chance to communicate to my family. Uh, in fact, I had the experience of breaking my fast alone uh, in the faculty around 7.30. I spent almost 30 minutes to break my fast so light and I'll sit down again and to do my PhD. So basically, I think my main challenge would be time because I am carrying a huge responsibility on my shoulder, which is to prove that I can finish my PhD within three years. Yeah. So I guess PhD builds a strong character in our self, yeah. Because I admit that myself, when I did my PhD, I think somehow in terms of mental and physical, we have to be really strong, you know, to, to encounter all the challenges that uh, we may face along the way. So um, yeah, I know it is never an easy task to begin with in terms of uh, you know doing PhD. But remember, the end result uh, is definitely worthy, inshallah. All right, so now I think this webinar will be complete without hearing to ourselves the 10 proven tips to GOT from both of our amazing speakers. So maybe Dr. Azhar, uh, maybe you can start first. I would love to hear more on your tips to GOT. The floor is uh, uh, Thank you, um, uh, Prof. Uh, just give me a second. I'm just sharing my screen. And uh, just one second. One second. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, it's processing, I hope. Maybe in a few seconds. Yep. 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 Yeah. Uh, your screen okay. right now. Uh, okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so um, this is my uh, perspective. Um, I believe out there people have uh, different things that work uh, for them. But I, these tips are what I thought worked for me uh, when I was a PhD student. Um, maybe you can relate, uh, and uh, if you if you think that works for you, then uh, you can uh, take it away. So this is my uh, top ten tips that uh, I thought uh, was uh, was helpful for myself. Uh, okay, so um, 
um, I keep on saying that uh, climbing, um, doing a PhD is like um, climbing a mountain. Uh, and this is uh, when I was in Tibet and in the background was uh, Mount Everest and you could see the base camp down there. And you can imagine that people who climb the mountain, uh, they always climb one step uh, at a time and it takes all those steps accumulated before you could actually get to the peak of the mountain. And also that means you have got to brave the winds, the storm, the coldness, the discomfort uh, along the way. So um, uh, in, in a nutshell, I would say that I did not start uh, out uh, expecting that this is going to be a walk in the park, but it's going to be a climb of a mountain. So my first tip um, is <laughs> pray. <laughs> um, no matter uh, how good or how brilliant one is, I believe that you still need uh, the help from Almighty. Uh, and you just, this, this journey is not um, uh, um, a, a journey that you can just take alone. Even if no one is with you in this journey, it takes someone great, someone powerful that could uh, try and help you so that you could pick yourself up for every fall. And that uh, for me is God. So um, I thought that uh, throughout my challenges, um, whenever I got problems, uh, I pray, I ask, and it's a direct communication between me and God and no one in between. And then, um, and with all honesty and sincerity, I ask for ways um, to be made easier for me. And Alhamdulillah, uh, for each challenge I had, uh, um, I, I, I had to pick myself up myself, uh, but God showed me the way, um, how to uh, keep on standing despite uh, uh, every hit, every fall. So I think we need to start uh, with having this as a foundation for anything we want to build upon. Uh, that's the tip number one. Um, tip number two uh, is that um, I believe that um, for this PhD, I am in charge of my PhD. Uh, it's not um, my supervisor, it's not uh, my uh, other people, uh, but me. That means that whenever I encounter a problem, uh, I have the responsibility to look for solutions in uh, whatever way. Um, and this uh, would mean uh, also um, um, uh, uh, learning from it uh, and uh, finding the people who could also uh, uh, solve the solution if the solution is not in front of your eyes. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, to get it done, uh, it's about you. It's about you completing every step uh, to the top of the mountain. So this is tip number two. I believe that if you let or you assume someone else is responsible for your PhD, um, uh, it would be easy to blame, but uh, you would not get the result that you want as much as you uh, would if you actually put the responsibility in your own hands. Um, <laughs> I remember this story of uh, someone who actually um, uh, uh, wanted to test the wisdom of this master called the Master of Zen. Uh, and uh, he used to have the answers for all the answers in the world. But one guy actually climbed up the mountain and caught a little bird in his hand and then uh, saw and finally saw the, mount, the, the master of Zen uh, the mount, uh, on the top of the mountain and asked him, um, Master, in my hand, uh, there is a bird. Is it alive or dead? Because what he would do if the master Zen said that uh, uh, if it is alive, he would just uh, open the hands and the bird would fly away. But if he, he says, uh, uh, um, if you say it's dead, he would open the hand and the bird fly away. But if you say it's alive, he would actually crush the bird to death and should see it's dead, you're wrong. So uh, when he saw the master, the master um, thought about the question and then look at the winds and look at the sun and then said, to him, um, the answer whether uh, the bird is alive or dead uh, is in your hands. So uh, the point of the matter is that um, uh, it is uh, in your hands whether you, you want to make this uh, work or not. So that's tip number two. Uh, and tip number three uh, is that uh, doing this PhD is like eating, eating an elephant. Um, kalau ada elephant yang halal, you can eat the elephant. <laughs> but what I mean is that um, you can never eat the elephant in one day. 
it so much it could not fill your stomach, your stomach will burst. But if you eat the elephant a bit by bit, you could finish the whole elephant. So um, uh, that's what I meant. Uh, this is a journey whereby you need to take one step at a time. This is a journey whereby you need to do uh, a, a bit of work uh, at, uh, 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 on consistently and on regular basis. So eat the elephant. And then uh, tips number four. Um, this is at a point that when you're already done uh, collecting data, uh, you have uh, started to write the whole thing. <coughs> um, some people uh, get stuck in trying to write a perfect um, thesis the first time. And because of uh, expecting a perfection, uh, it was uh, never started or it, uh, it took time to really start. But um, it, it, it is uh, more effective if you just prepare a bad draft. And then what you do is just edit the draft. So um, I think that um, what uh, needed to be done is just to uh, spray uh, the bullets of thoughts, uh, just in matter of uh, your thoughts. Uh, and then from the thoughts, you could uh, close uh, in whatever you are typing and go away for a walk, come back. And then when you start to uh, write about it, uh, it makes more sense and then uh, it uh, just flows better. So I think this uh, is one uh, another tip that uh, could be uh, useful. Uh, and then tip number five, um, the, I also discovered this a bit late and I wish I knew a bit uh, earlier, is that uh, it helps if you tabulate your literature search because um, when you write uh, your uh, thesis, you need to um, uh, quote the references which are uh, relevant uh, to every sentence that you write. So um, if you have this in a, a tabulated form, in table form, it's easier to pick the ones uh, which are relevant and that uh, could uh, speed up uh, the process uh, of writing uh, the thesis. Then um, tip number six, um, let people uh, that matter, not everyone, just the people that matter, know that you want to GOT, if that's your intention. Yeah? Um, I, I knew, I, um, uh, for me, it's something that I never knew I could uh, GOT. Uh, it's like climbing uh, Mount Everest. Um, um, uh, so Edmund Hillary was uh, and uh, Tenzing Sherpa, both of them were the first people who climbed Mount Everest. Uh, but um, uh, when they succeeded, uh, this question was posed to uh, Sir Edmund Hillary uh, that people asked, uh, Sir, uh, do you know uh, that uh, you will be able to conquer uh, Mount Everest? Uh, and uh, Edmund Hillary uh, replied, he said, <laughs> he, he laughed, he laughed, and then he replied, he said, uh, no, um, I don't know whether I could conquer uh, Mount Everest, uh, but then um, it would not be interesting if you already knew that you would conquer the mountain. Um, conquering Mount Everest uh, was not about conquering the mountain, but it's about conquering yourself. So um, uh, when I let people know that I want to GOT, I do not know that I can GOT. But the story was that um, I actually uh, was, um, you know, to GOT, you need to have a Senate um, letter uh, before four years as a PhD student. I was a full time on paper, officially a full time PhD student, but I was working uh, full time uh, as a doctor. Um, but um, uh, when I uh, finished my Viva, uh, it was uh, in August this year, and uh, my deadline was, uh, that time uh, was 3rd September, uh, 3rd September. Uh, so uh, I, um, I cleared my Viva with a minor correction, but I need to get a um, Senate letter before 3rd September to qualify as a graduate on time. So uh, when I finished uh, my Viva that day, I remember uh, I, uh, I texted uh, Prof Swahili uh, because I did let her know that Prof, I would like to try to GOT. Uh, I told her before. And then uh, when I texted her, she texted back. And then she said, um, I, I asked whether is there still a chance to GOT. Uh, and then uh, she said, uh, sorry, doctor. Actually, the meeting is today, <laughs> the day of my Viva. <laughs> Uh, the Senate meeting, I mean. That means that the next Senate meeting will be likely beyond the 3rd September. I would have missed it. 
I said, it's okay, Prof, thank you so much. Uh, at least I tried, and that's all I needed. Uh, I put, uh, then uh, a few minutes later, uh, the phone rang, and then it was Prof Suhaili on the phone saying, you know, uh, doctor, this is uh, Allah's will. Um, the meeting today had been cancelled. Uh, it was to be held on 1st September. So you got um, about three weeks if you could complete your correction and send it uh, to Senate. Uh, then you can GOT. Uh, so um, I got that information uh, and then I work on the correction and Alhamdulillah, I managed to send it just in time. Uh, and on 1st September, I got the letter uh, from the uh, Senate just two days away from missing uh, the deadline. So I think, remember I said the, found, the, the foundation is praying. Uh, I mean, God has opened the way but you still need to do the correction, even if they give you a grace time. So I think um, just use uh, um, uh, whatever you have uh, and then people around you will help. And then uh, tip number seven, um, uh, it's quite awkward yeah, to say um, walk and think. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I uh, like to be an example um, so people will follow to live a healthy lifestyle. Because I see a lot of people, sick people at my emergency department, they, they come in a very bad state. And I believe that we could actually prevent that. So along the line of preventive emergency medicine, I try to inculcate um, this idea of you should exercise every day. And the best exercise and the most doable is to walk every day. I walk, I try to walk 10,000 steps every day. I mean, with all my work commitment and all, I only uh, manage to average uh, my iPhone showed me it's 9,400 or so uh, every day for this year. Um, we're not hit 10,000, but it's almost there. So it's the same um, with this um, PhD. It's also a walk that you're going to take. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but the, the, the wonderful thing about walking is that not just it is for health, but it helps you to think. Uh, I used to think about the problems of my PhD, um, the solution to my uh, every problem the PhD uh, in the even when it was first designed uh, in uh, for every challenge that I had to take to solve uh, the walk actually provided me the with the solution um, and uh, when you uh, got back you sometimes got the answer so uh, this is my tip uh, take the walk not just uh, for the PhD uh, but also for your health so that you will not end up in my department <laughs> So uh, tip number eight uh, is have the right people in your contact. Um, we live in a world where pe people have their own ability and uh, specialties uh, and these people can help you. I was uh, I had some problems uh, when I was stuck, for example, with my statistics. Uh, I got some people to help uh, and when I was uh, stuck um, uh, with uh, uh, because I didn't have time, I did not uh, put my focus on the format uh, of the write-up of the thesis, uh, but I did uh, um, pay someone to actually um, make it uh, follow the format because I really didn't have time. Because at the point of time when I was finishing my write-up, uh, COVID came, I was a frontliner, I had to work uh, and all that. But I think uh, you could do something because the most important is the um, the cake, the content, the substance, but the, the rest would be is just how you want the cake uh, the shape of the cake to be as the university would want it, uh, i.e. the template. So um, I also have some people who had this, roughly the same methodology that I use uh, from other universities. I'm, I'm forever grateful for them. Uh, so uh, together with all uh, this, um, uh, it helped me uh, to get uh, into the, uh, get the work done um, with their assistance. Then tip number nine. Um, okay, tip number nine, probably it relates to uh, the question that Prof uh, Swali posed to me, how uh, I, um, I um, divided my time, do I wake up early in the morning to work on my thesis? Um, not really, but it is related to this jar. So if you look in front of you uh, on the slide, there are two jars. Uh, the first jar, um, actually they consist of the same um, uh, amount of uh, pebbles, uh, rocks and sand. Uh, but if you uh, notice the first jar on the left, uh, it, it could not fill up the whole jar. It's beyond the capacity of the jar. But the one on the right, uh, it could fill even well below the capacity of that jar. 
So actually, this is a story um, uh, that uh, was related to me, that one day there was a professor who entered uh, a, a class and then brought out this empty jar and uh, he has with him rocks, pebbles and sand. And then uh, he uh, asked them, can uh, all this fit into the jar? And uh, um, they didn't know, so he showed them. He poured in the sand first, just like the one on the left, followed by the pebbles and then followed by the rocks. It didn't fit. So he asked the same question to the class. Do you think all these rocks, pebbles and sand could ever fit this jar? At which all the students said, no, it's impossible, prof. And then the prof said, let me show you again. He emptied the jar again. And what he did now uh, then was uh, he filled the jar with the rocks first uh, and then followed uh, by the pebbles and last the sand. And amazingly, it fit just the one on the right. So what this story tells is that what the prof said, I mean, the prof asked the students, what do you think this uh, means? So the students try out this and that, but the prof said what it means that you got to put the most important things first uh, in the jar, the rocks, and then the less importance, uh, the, uh, the pebbles, and the least important, the sand, and it will fit. Just like when I'm working at my hospital in the emergency department, we triage. We triage according to the red, just like the traffic light red, which is the most critical, followed by the uh, yellow, semi-critical and followed by green, which is non-critical. So even we have lots of patients, we are still able to handle them according to priority. The rocks would mean like for me personally, my family is important, uh, my values is important, my work is important. I got to get them out of the way uh, and then followed by uh, the, the pebbles. Um, uh, the pebbles would be uh, something which is less uh, important, but still important um, uh, to me. Uh, and last would be uh, the sand. Uh, the sand would be uh, those things like, like um, uh, um, uh, uh, maybe uh, reading, um, um, playing video games and whatnot. Uh, for me, maybe my sand was uh, um, watching movies uh, or um, playing guitar on the weekend. Uh, but uh, when uh, I could still fit it in because I thought that they still matter for me to keep my sanity or tell jokes <laughs> to my friends. So it's filling up a jar uh, and uh, you could uh, try to slot in based on the priority. So that is tip number nine. And I leave you with the last tip. Uh, the tip is again back to the mountain. Um, what this means is that if you look at this mountain, uh, you can see the winds, the, the top of the mountain. You could see that's a strong wind and it's deadly. Um, but you could see the top, you could see the top and the top is the end results. Uh, and actually what this picture means is that you can get to the top in any way, any route, any direction, um, as long as the destination is the top. So um, doing this PhD, the end result or the destination is to get that thesis uh, completely done. Uh, and in my case, I had the draft uh, following like the content that is required by the UITM and it was in the same um, in the same thesis. I didn't actually start um, according to order, but I started according to what I have uh, and, and fill it up uh, because uh, I know in the end it will be that thesis that is going to need to be uh, submitted. So there you go, the 10 tips from me. So GOT, of course you can, you got this. You will not have everything, but you will have enough. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think after this, I'll be receiving a lot of texts from our postgrad students to help them with their SNAP letter, perhaps. Remember, my, my handphone number is on uh, Ipsis Facebook. But yeah, by all means, um, we at Ipsis uh, will try our best to help all the postgrad students. All right, now, um, but, but Dr. Asa, I think I really, I really like the point where you mentioned about filling up the jar. Because I think from the analogy, we all can learn that uh, prioritization is one of the key elements to success. And me myself, I need to improve that 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 um, you know that element as well. You know, the the skill to prioritize uh, ourselves. Right. So uh, now I think we'll have Dr. Amiro to share more on his tips to GOT. Back to you, Dr. Amiro. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sohaili, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Al Zamani. 
just to share with you, um, when I first met Datuk Azamani, it was during the 3MT thesis competition, and I lost to him. And I, I and I feel proud losing to someone who is very caliber, someone who is very charismatic, and I lost to someone who represented Malaysia for the national 3MT thesis. All right. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Azamani. Uh, okay, let me just share with you my screen for a while. One minute. Okay, let's see. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. I'm okay. All right, I just would like to share with you guys, all of you, the 10 tips that I think it works on me. All right, and some of the tips here have been shared with uh, Dr. Azamani, but I will uh, state it in my point of view, right? The first one, the first important tip is, again, this is the most important tip that I would like to share with all of you. I think it is the same point as uh, Dr. Azamani where we, as human beings, we have to seek help from the Almighty. Again, when we talk about uh, seeking help from Almighty, the Almighty knows the best solutions to our problem. We just need to pray and to pray more and seek His assistance and Him alone, not anyone else. Complaining to others about our PhD journey and stressing over our problems will not solve our issue. Keep asking Him and inshallah He will respond to our request. Do not give up. All right, believe that God will always ease your way, provided if you request something from him. That is my tip number one. My tip number two would be establish a supportive support system. This is very important because throughout your PhD journey, there will be, okay, you have to find someone who are in the same boat as you're in. It is important for you to have a supportive support system throughout your PhD journey as they are going through what you are going through right now. Be friend with PhD candidates from other faculties as well because most of the time they might give you an insight for your study. For example, I did my PhD from the Faculty of Business. Um, I have friends from Faculty of Engineering, uh, Medic and Art and Design. Sometimes they give me an input which I could inculcate that into my thesis. Sometimes um, when they are not in your particular field, they will ask you questions in which you think that, hey, this question is quite good for me to include or for me to have it in my PhD report. The next tip would be be disciplined, three pages per day. Again, this is very, very subjective for me. I train myself to write at least three pages per day for my PhD report. Because if you do not write your report, who else is going to write it, All right? If you can write more than three, per three pages per day, you are most welcome to do so. Imagine if let's say you write three pages per day, you could write at least 90 pages in a month, All right? Next. Learn the art of rejection. Okay, um, to be honest, throughout my PhD journey, I have faced a lot of rejection from my supervisor. All right, but I take it positively because rejections are good, to be honest, if you take it positively. Because when your supervisor, your supervisor rejects your work, it is a platform for you to further improve because your supervisor could foresee there are rooms for improvement. There must be reasons why your supervisor reject your work. But you have to take it positively as you have to treat rejections as a platform for you to further improve your PhD report. The next one is learn how to work in a group and how to take criticism. This is very important because as a PhD student, you will be part of a small research group 
usually consisting of your supervisor and a few other students, which mean you will need to learn how to work as a team. Most of the time, you will get your work critiqued by others. And it is very, very important for you to lower down your ego and take it positively. If, let's say, you are not lowering your ego, you tend to fight back against the criticism and you will not complete your PhD because you think that you're right. Again, when you do your PhD, you are opening up yourself to receive feedback or to receive criticism from other people. Next, make conferences as part of your PhD journey. Again, I really like conferences because it is a place where you will get idea for your write-up as there will be prominent researchers sharing their thoughts and idea. I am very blessed because um, I managed to know um, someone who's very prominent in marketing, which is Professor uh, Jonathan. I will show you the photo after this, where he actually validated my questionnaire for my PhD. Imagine to have someone, marketing guru, branding guru, to validate your questionnaire is something that I will cherish forever. Next tip would be follow what is happening in your field. Okay, this is Professor Jonathan Wilson. He is actually from um, Greenwich University and he converted to Muslim just because of his page, uh, not PhD, but he did a study on halal marketing and branding. And because of that, he shared with us that he converted to Muslim because of his study. It wouldn't make any sense to enter deep into a specialized field of study before finding out who's who in your chosen area. You have to make sure that you get to know who are the prominent researchers in your field and you are expected to establish some contacts with these celebrated academics to give you a career boost should you want to become an academician one day. Next, create a plan B. When it comes to PhD, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Plan A, most of the time your plan A doesn't always work. Sometimes your research won't go as planned and when this happens, you will feel completely uninspired and there might be other arising issues that you have to deal with. Henceforth, please create a plan B. The plan B might be used for you to mitigate the issues that might occur. For example, um, when I um, adapt and adopt my questionnaire for my PhD journey, I have to have at least 10 sets of questionnaire to show to my supervisor because most of the time, your main set of questionnaire will get rejected. So before you get disheartened, it is very important for you to have plan B. In my case, I have nine plan B, C, D, A, F, G for me to show to my supervisor should my questionnaire got rejected. Okay. Next. This is very, very important. I think Dato has shared before this where we cannot expect others to fix your problem. Some of us might think that, you know, while asking help is valuable, Again, it is your PhD, it is your journey, and you are responsible 100% for it. Hence, you have to be grateful if others help you, but please do not expect it or depend on it. To a minimum level, right, to a very minimum level, you should be able to cope with each task in your PhD on your own. Though for many, things will work much better if you ask for help and collaborate with others. Again, this is your own journey. At the end of your PhD journey, you will be sitting for Viva. Even though your supervisors will be in the same room, but you are responsible for your own study. The examiners won't ask your supervisor, the examiners will ask you. So basically, if you know everything about your research, if you have faith in your research, shouldn't be an issue for you to counter the examiners. The last tip, this is the last tip that I am practicing until today, where 
you have to have fun with whatever that you're doing right now. Obviously, right? Obviously, you can't be a complete hedonist if you are having like hundreds of thousand words of thesis hanging above your head. However, however, yeah, during your PhD um, journey or studies, you should remind yourself to have some fun and enjoy your life. I remember when I did my PhD, I set an alarm 8 o'clock in the morning and the alarm entitled have fun with your PhD every single day. Because for me, I believe that without having some fun, high quality work is impossible. And I would like to share with you guys that behind every successful child is an adult who believes in him and behind a child's success lies a mom prayers. Again, do good to your parents. Ask your parents to pray for your success. This is very, very important. And when we talk about PhD, right, it's not about a journey of occurring that title, but again, I treat my PhD journey to becoming a better myself because without PhD, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't know my true strength. I wouldn't know my true capabilities because when you do your PhD, at certain point of time, right, it pushes to it pushes you to a certain limit. Hence, take this as a platform for you to know yourself better. And I wish you guys all the best with your PhD. Have a positive mindset and inshallah, you will ace it. Thank you so much. Dr. Sahili, mute. Dr. Sahili, muted. Sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Amirul and Dr. Azhar. I think now that we have uh, listened to such inspiring stories and sharing from both of our amazing speakers, I think now is a great time for us. To, uh, for uh, I, I, I think now is a great time to to actually to uh, shoot uh, to shoot some burning questions from our participants to to the speakers. All right. So let me check. I think, um, yeah, it looks like we have a few questions ready in the question box. Um, all right. Okay, just one question. Um, what is GOT? GOT is graduate on time. Um, uh, you can start daripada soalan Izzah, Dr. Suhaili. Uh, dekat new, soalan Izzah. Oh, during okay. your challenge, during during uh, okay. your challenges, yeah. Okay, start daripada okay. atas sampai ke bawah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Man. All right. right, so we have a question from Izzah, okay? The question is, uh, during your challenges during the PhD, does your supervisor has a huge hand in hand in helping or were you independent in confronting it? Um, I, when you had to get the hyperbaric chamber from the Air Force, did your supervisor help? So I think this question is actually, um, is, has been addressed to Dr. Alza. So Dr. Alza, maybe you can, um, you know, you can help to answer this question from Isa. Mm, sure. Um, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, uh, I've got, um, messages about the questions on on the chat so i could i could read it actually um so the the question that was asked uh, is that um during the challenges during the phd does your supervisor has a huge hand in helping or were you independent in confronting it i.e when you have to get the hyperbaric chamber from the air force did your supervisor help well we try to um, um get help as much as uh, as uh, i could but um, I knew that I had to actually uh, count on myself uh, most of the time because uh, my supervisor is also busy. <clears throat> so the, um, uh, I, I plan it so that I do not have to trouble my supervisor because I knew, knew what I had to do. Uh, so uh, throughout the data collection, I was able to carry it out my, myself. Uh, and I, I only um, uh, would uh, ask the supervisor if I uh, have problem that I could not uh, solve or beyond uh, beyond me. But um, throughout the, the the research, I um, 
uh, uh, look for the solutions and uh, alhamdulillah i was able to uh, find uh, every solution uh, on my own so that was the question uh, number one right. um, yeah. um, another question i think this one is to dr azar as well next five to ten years does malaysia emergency medicine faculty have any inventory of research subject to look into thank you <laughs> that's, an, that's an interesting question. Um, it's not put into an inventory uh, at the moment, but emergency medicine is huge. Uh, there are a million and ones or limitless infinity in terms of aspects uh, to look at. Uh, it may be from the aspects of how to make it, uh, how to make the system uh, better, the weight management better the first encounter the pre-hospital the uh, addressing uh, the uh, address uh, the excess block when the whole hospital was full and now with the COVID, there's a, a million and one things uh, to look at uh, to ensure that the system is smooth to expand the capacity to expand the capability and creative ways and even uh, using um, um, maybe we have not under uh, utilized other um, facilities uh, that can be used uh, to house uh, these patients or even living in the new norms uh, and um, um, uh, acute. From emergency medicine, like I said, it's, um, uh, it's, um, it's a social medicine actually uh, and people can look it, at it uh, in uh, so many ways. A medicine uh, between the poor all the way to the rich and everyone in between the system that is involved uh, that uh, that could affect uh, people in matter of life and death. So uh, I we have not put it in inventory because there's so much to look at it. Um, so to answer that question is that um, it is not in an inventory form, but if you just look at the problems because the mother uh, of all solution stem from problem. So whenever you find problem in the emergency medicine there you are that's your research topic so that's my answer to that okay thank you Dr. Uh, that's one question from Nuru Shafika I think uh, perhaps Dr. Uh, Amiro can help to answer this question how can we create a good bonding with the co-supervisor <laughs> okay um, that's a very good question Nuru Shafika uh, when I did my PhD, to be honest, to be honest, I had a very good relationship with both my supervisors, my main and my co-supervisors. Even until now, I am still connecting with them. Even until now, I will send them WhatsApp or text message just to ask about their, you know. Semua-semua lah macam kita tanya dengan kawan-kawan. So, I think it's very important for you to keep that momentum going even though you have finished your PhD. But to answer your question, how to create a good bonding with your co-supervisor again, it is up to you. It is your duty to show your work to your co-supervisor. I think kebanyakan uh, mistake yang, yang I perasan, to be honest, yeah, where I think students are waiting um, respond or anything from their supervisors. Again, supervisors are there just to guide you in completing your PhD. It is up to you. It is your duty to show your work to your co-supervisor first or your main supervisor because at the end of the day, it is your main supervisor who will sign your form. But then again, the role of co-supervisor is to help you because he or she is still part of your journey. It is important for you to show your work and at least get some advice from your co-supervisor on how you can further improve your work. So once you have gotten all the advice, compile everything and show to your main supervisor. And you may say to your main supervisor, for example, Prof, I have discussed with my co-supervisor and these are the things that we need to improve. So what are your thoughts on this? All right. So again, please, you have to maintain the relationship with your co-supervisor, ask for the feedback and what are the things that you could improve in your thesis. Okay, I totally agree with you, Dr. Amiro. Uh, I think as a student, you need to chase your supervisors because your supervisors, are, uh, it doesn't matter whether at UITM or in other you know, universities, um, supervisors they also have their own KPIs. They have their research work, they have their you know, teaching hours that they have to fulfill. 
and they have other post grad students as well. So you need to go and chase your supervisor and you know show your work from time to time to your supervisor and don't expect your supervisor to remind you on deadlines and whatnot. That is not the right way. All right. Uh, Dr. Lee, sorry, if, if I may add, right? Mm -hmm. Please do not treat your co-supervisor as co-supervisor. Regardless the name means supervisor or co-supervisors, they are both your supervisors. So when they are both your supervisors, they have the right to know the progress of your work. As simple as that. All right. Thank you. Okay, but just would like to actually inform all of you the general guideline, you know, on this uh, on the contribution by the main uh, versus the co-supervisor. Most of the time, in general, based on uh, my reading as well, uh, it is it will be eighty percent. Uh, the rest of the responsibility will be borne by the main and 20% will be by the two supervisor. But it depends on um, the supervisor, uh, the supervisors lah, basically. Some some co-supervisors would like to contribute more. So that will be okay. Uh, okay, uh, but that is, uh, you know, the general guideline. All right, so perhaps another question uh, by Ola. On a scale of 1 to 10, how very difficult is PhD? I have applied for my PhD and I'm hoping for a positive reply, but I'm very scared. So perhaps Dr. Alza would like to answer this question by Ola. Uh, on a scale of 5 to 10, <laughs> um, personally, maybe I would put it 5 um, because I was like um, uh, somewhere in the middle, maybe. Um, I think um, um, well, everyone's experience is unique. I do not know other people's experience. So uh, this is just um, uh, based on my uh, experience alone. Um, I would put it at uh, uh, five uh, because I think that it's uh, there were challenges, but Alhamdulillah, I could overcome the challenges. Prof? Sorry. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Azhar. Um, yeah. Another question by Atika. Do you have any tips on how to juggle PhD during pandemic time, especially now you have, you have to teach your little preschoolers? And at the same time, you also need to have a sane mind. Dr. Amiru, would you like to try to answer this question by Atika? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Sister Atika, for the question. I think it's not just about doing research. I think as lecturer, we need to write paper during this pandemic time, right? I think, right, uh, the only tip that can uh, that I can share with you guys is just go on, just go on. This is just a situation and this situation, inshallah, is temporary, okay? Inshallah, temporary. Again, you have to, you have to be focused 100% on your write-up. Maybe you guys say that it's easier said than done, but again, for me, it's, it is all about your mindset, how you want to accomplish things. If let's say you have a positive mindset, regardless any situation, you will be able to do it. Just think that you know, this journey is very fun. You know, pandemic is one of the catalysts for to, to further improve ourselves. All right. And I think it's very, very important for you to have the mindset that, you know, regardless any situation, you'll be able to write something. At least you write something. Three to four pages per day. Inshallah, by the end of three years, you'll be able to produce one whole PhD thesis. All right. Thank you, Dr. Amiro. I think this is uh, this is a good question from yeah. Anonymous. Um, I think I'm going to I'm going to let Dr. Alza to answer this question. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Alza. OK, so uh, OK, the question is, have you ever feel like quitting in any stage of the journey? And how does your supervisor help you? So, Dr. Azza, um, can you yeah, thank, thank you. Um, uh, personally, I, um, to, to be honest, I, Alhamdulillah, I didn't feel like quitting. I thought that, um, in, inshallah, I could do it. It's just a matter of time whether I could do it um, early or fast uh, because of my work commitment. I kind of uh, have a clear idea of what I wanted to show uh, from um, my um, research because um, uh, in my mind, like I, like I showed you, it's like a mountain. 
um, uh, I, I, my, my eyes is uh, on the peak. And when I meet in the peak, uh, it's like what I wanted to show from my study. And it was when I designed it, uh, it was also with that in mind. It's like I want to see this. I want to show this. It's like um, um, what graph I want to show, you know, what kind of uh, things like that. So um, uh, in terms of quitting, um, I did not uh, got to a stage where I felt like quitting uh, because I thought that, hey, I could uh, make the progress a bit by bit. And and and, and that was uh, now. The second question is that uh, regarding the supervisor's help. Yeah, uh, you could get supervisor's help, but at the same time, remember you could also ask anyone else who could actually give the help that you need, even though they're not your supervisors. So um, I also did that. Um, and even your co-supervisors also uh, could have an insight that could uh, provide some uh, solution. So um, the point of the matter is not the supervisor. The point of the matter is that who can give the solution. Uh, if the supervisor can give the solution, well and good. But uh, if they can't, another person, will, uh, other people who are not your supervisor, they, if they can give the solution, that is good as well. So um, uh, just um, I, I think um, uh, in a nutshell uh, is that uh, quitting um, uh, may, be, may appear if it becomes like um, it's beyond your uh, capacity and capability. Maybe you, you got to think about that. But uh, think about that uh, whenever you have that situation uh, is that is this something that you uh, can overcome? Uh, Dr. Lily, uh, Dr. Suhaili, do you mind if I share you a slide uh, just to probably help uh, with regard to this question, if, if you allow me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is being shown. Can you see this slide? And thanks for um. Yeah, you can see the slide, Dr. Azam. Can you see this uh, like red and green there? Yeah. Uh, my, my, upper. you can see, yeah? Can you I, see? I can see it now. Yeah. Can you see there's a, uh, I wrote area of influence uh, in the center, this slide. Just now I could see it, but now it's missing. Okay. Let me see. If I can show it to you. Um, okay, uh, let me try once more. Uh, if it goes, inshallah, I think it will. Just, uh, okay, all right. Can you see? No. Okay. All right. You can see, yeah? Yes. Okay, can you see the area of influence in the center? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. So, um, I believe in this. This is uh, from if you book seven habit uh, read, book from uh, seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey has passed away, but he actually left a great legacy uh, in terms of uh, how we should uh, think uh, in handling our situation. So if you look at uh, green and red, the, uh, and I mark area of influence as uh, green. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we all have challenges, uh, we all have situations, but uh, our task is that whenever we face challenges, uh, we should put our energy uh, into the area of influence, into the green area. But if you put that energy into the red area, which is outside the area of influence, you will not make a difference. Um, I used to say like, Macham, if you lose a cat that you love, if you cry a million and a million years, uh, for a million years you cry, you are putting your energy of crying in that red area where nothing happens and the cat is still dead. But if you said, okay, the cat is dead, I can't do anything about that, let's get a new cat. That is putting your energy into the area of influence. Tak pernah pun menangis, but you get a new cat, probably a better cat. So and in relation to the question of like, have you ever quit uh, whether your supervisor helped or not? Uh, the most important is like, number one, when you feel like quitting, you think that energy of uh, thinking to quit or uh, the energy that put to find the solution to the problem that you have, that would be in the green area because you're thinking of a solution more than you're thinking of quitting because it's the same energy, right? So if you think of the solution and you found it, 
then uh, that would not make you quit. In the end, we are practical people. We just want solutions. So that's what I meant. Uh, and the same thing uh, when you need uh, supervisor's help also, if uh, you, you can't get uh, the uh, solution, you uh, still focus your energy and effort of influence finding, finding where you can find the solution. Uh, so it's just as simple as that. Thank you so much, Dr. Azhar. Uh, I think I will relate this also in answering the question by the mother who said about how do you juggle with the children uh, during pandemic? It's the same thing, whether you could put in the engine to find solution whereby your kids can still go through the home, uh, the, 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 the schooling through the webcam. But while they're doing their, uh, with interacting with the teacher, that will be a time for you to work on your thesis. That will make you sit down in a way rather than focus or, you know, on the children single habits and doing nothing. While that classroom is going on, you could still do your research at the same uh, this is right up at the same time when your kids are having the class. And in fact, you will uh, you will put a gum on your bum not to go anywhere and you will be productive. So it's, that is putting your energy into the area of influence, even during pandemic times. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Azza. So meaning that we have to focus on the area that we can control, right? Rather than thinking of something that, you know, beyond our control. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think uh, there's one uh, question from Julia. Uh, I think uh, perhaps Dr. Amirul, Dr. Amirul uh, can help me to answer this question. Do you think having a PhD without working experience is okay? Uh, because Julia is a PhD fast track applicant but she still have doubt about this. OK, uh, thank you so much for the question, Julia. Um, this is just my humble opinion, all right? Sometimes without having um, working experience, you still can do your PhD. You still can do your PhD uh, because most of the sources of your write-up will be based from journal article, all right? But, but, all right, if you have a working experience, that will definitely give you an added advantage to your report because you can relate that to the to your report. Sorry. OK, if let's say you do not have any working experience. All right. What you can do is that mingle around with those who are working. Share with them your your thoughts or your, your study, because sometimes from the perspective of um, employer, from, from the perspective of working adult, they might give you an insight for your study. So it is okay for you not to have working experience, but if let's say you have any working experience, it will definitely help you. But also if let's say you don't have working experience, what you can do is to mingle around with those who are working and share with them your study and seek for their feedback or advice, because I'm sure they will be able to assist you on this. Thank you so much, Dr. Amirul. There's one good question from Azman. Okay, and I, I think uh, perhaps Dr. Alza yeah. could help me to answer this question. How how do you keep yourself in the mode of highly motivated at all the time uh, at all times during your PhD study? If you have a downtime, what are the best things that will boost the mood? Please share. Um, how to keep um, highly motivated? Um, can I say that like um, it's hard to fake motivation, meaning that um, I could just shout out of my lung, I am motivated or, you know, I am high spirited, but, you know, your heart doesn't follow that. Um, but I think it's um, uh, motivation is maybe uh, um, easier or, or make more sense when you look at the question, answering the question why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing uh, the PhD? Uh, so if you have um, a strong why, um, then uh, that will probably be your motivation. Uh, but having the whys uh, alone uh, would not guarantee, guarantee you to complete it. But I think if you have um, consistent um, uh, um, fall back to work on the PhD. I mean, it's in, at the end of the day, it's about uh, getting the work done, right? So if you see a little bit work done, you feel your motivation increases. So um, if you write some uh, idea thoughts on your uh, on that um, laptop, 
that becomes a little progress. Um, don't think of the elephant. Uh, think of the a slice of the elephant meat, uh, or you know, just a spoonful of elephant meat. But when you start sprinkling, uh, take a bit, uh, take a sip, uh, uh, then uh, you uh, you will lead you to take another mouthful. It will lead you to take another slice. Uh, or bigger slice. I think that is the motivation that you can keep because you can't fake it. A motivation will come when you start to have a little bit of work done. So if you look like uh, Dr. Amirul set a very good example in discipline um, and um, when he does it consistently, like um, he can get a little bit work done, even a little bit, that will attract more motivation. So I think that would be my answer to that. And then in terms of the question of uh, downtime, feeling down and all that, I mean, to be honest, I did have my downtime. Um, like I, but I still uh, do not want to put my energy on things which are beyond my control, but it will be my control. For me, uh, my walks are important uh, because uh, that's what I have. <laughs> sometimes I had my, um, my self con con conversation sometimes Ada masa juga tercakap sorang-sorang, eh? macam you geram sangat, ada juga. Eh? But we are human, we are emotional beings, emotion, uh, beings uh, with trapped emotions inside. Uh, but it's important to be rational uh, and uh, sensible. Uh, and uh, if we are in that line, just uh, be sensible and rational. And your moves are all sensible and rational. You will actually step on um, one step higher for that mountain. Okay, um, maybe the second question. Okay, uh, from Hafiz uh, Rahim, um, maybe Dr. Amirul can help me to answer this question. During your PhD time, how do you deal mostly with the writer's block problem when you seem to lose ideas on the research subject? Okay, um, sorry, uh, from Sapa tadi? Uh, Hafiz, from Hafiz, Hafiz. Yeah. Question, the question is from Hafiz, Hafiz Rahim. Okay. How do you face them? Yeah. You, okay, write this block problem. All right. Okay, again, when you are having problem, remember what Dr. Azamani has just mentioned, walk, walk, go to mama, go and have fun. That is where your idea will come. Sometimes, um, I cannot deny the fact that sometimes I don't macam, I cannot even think. I cannot even think, all right? So what I'll do is that I'll walk, I keluar, I pergi makan, just to get that momentum for me to think back. Because sometimes if let's say you are seated in one particular area for a very long time, it's very hard for idea to come in. Sometimes you may want to walk around to kawan tempat duduk, you do mingle around first dengan kawan-kawan lain. That is where you will find the way for you to think again for your report, right? That's very, very important because if let's say you're static into one place, right? We cannot even think, all right? We cannot even think. So Hafiz, this is my advice, go out, walk for 30 minutes or 20 minutes just to get the momentum for you to be able to think again for your PhD report. That's very important and it works, trust me, it works. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Amiro. Uh, another question from, I think this is the last question that I'm going to actually, you know, um, give to the panel today. Uh, the question from Megat Nabil, uh, this question is to both panel actually. If you can meet your past self during your study, your PhD study, what will you say to yourself? <laughs> okay, Dr. Alza, maybe you can start first. If you can meet your past self during your PhD study, what will you say to yourself? Um, uh, okay, what would I say to myself? Um, maybe I, well, you, if I were to say to myself from the point that I am now, of course I would know um, what it takes uh, and it, I would have uh, not, uh, I would have started the journey um, without uh, doing the mistakes that I made. Along the way, I did fall many times. I mean, um, I took hits. I fell, uh, but I had to um, uh, stand up. But uh, if I were um, to say to myself, um, maybe I would say that uh, uh, 
just um, just uh, keep uh, walking uh, uh, and uh, keep climbing, um, but uh, follow uh, the um, uh, all uh, this what I said just now that I shared with you, uh, and um, in that probably it would have made uh, me uh, my life easier as a PhD student, uh, and um, probably was. Um, uh, I wouldn't be doing uh, some of the mistakes uh, I made uh, or wasting some of the time uh, that I did. Uh, it's always um, easier to look back um, because after you reach at the end of the journey, when you look back, vision is always 2020. All your mistakes uh, were clear, uh, all the uh, right things you did and all the wrong things uh, you did, you know. Um, but when you are uh, starting, maybe uh, what we try to share, uh, hopefully, uh, would be uh, helpful uh, to you. I would I probably say um, keep on uh, walking uh, to that uh, destination uh, and uh, just avoid the wrong path. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Dr. Azra. And how about you, Dr. Amirul? All right, uh, my answer will be very simple. You are more than what you think. All right. Uh, go on and take challenge. All right. Okay, just to share with you a bit, Magat, yeah. Um, before I did my PhD, and I, I mean as a student, we are constantly being bombarded that you know a PhD is very difficult, it's not as easy as what you think. All right. But when I did my PhD, to be honest, yeah, to be honest, yeah, I think PhD is super easy. It's easier than our master, it's easier than our degree. Because you know why? Doing PhD is just about research. You just have to produce five chapters. And five chapters, again, you are not coming out with new study. Again, you are going to enhance the current study. So I think you have to take the risk, do your PhD, and you have to have the mindset that a PhD is actually easy. Because once you have that particular mindset, inshallah, everything will come into one place. Thank you so much, Dr. Amiro. I think that's all the time that we have to address our participants' questions. And it looks like we have covered uh, most of the questions. But before we wrap up to this webinar, um, I think we'd love to hear some last word from our speakers. Okay, uh, Dr. Azam, may, perhaps you want to say something? Any last word from you for, for today? Okay, um, I, uh, I, first of all, I'd like to thank um, um, Prof. Um, Dr. Swahili, um, uh, Dr. Aman, and of course uh, my uh, uh, panel, uh, my co-panelist, uh, Dr. Amiro, because I, um, I have to say that uh, I'm amazed at his discipline, uh, at his energy and enthusiasm uh, from the first time that I met him uh, in uh, at UITM. So uh, I am learning uh, um, many things from many people that I met along the way. Uh, in uh, UITM, uh, so I, I have a great experience uh, being a UITM uh, student. I would say that it was a wonderful um, journey for me. Uh, I enjoyed it because I feel slightly younger <laughs> uh, doing a PhD at, at my age. And uh, if I can do it, if someone uh, like me uh, can do it, uh, I have no doubt that all of you out there can do it and do even better than me. Right. Okay, any last from you, Dr. Amirul? Okay, uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank Sushi Professor Dr. Sohali and Sushi Professor Dr. Aman for giving both of us, myself and Dato Azamadi, for this opportunity to, to share our thoughts and ideas on PhD. To be honest, I am confidently can say that, you know, all these participants in today's sharing session will definitely ace their journey. Again, I would like to congratulate in advance here yeah, to all of you that, you know, I'm not congratulating for you to achieve that title, the doctor title. But again, I would like to congratulate for the, how should I say this? Eh? Okay, I cannot put it in words, but again, embrace the journey of knowing yourself better. Again, that is the most key takeaway message that you should acquire from your PhD journey. Again, it's not about the title, but it is about knowing yourself better. Because once you know yourself better, you'll be able to face any challenges that is being thrown to you.
All right, great. Thank you so much to our speakers and our participants for being here with us today. Uh, we really appreciate your time and I hope that all the participants are able to grasp important key takeaways from this webinar. Just a little reminder, uh, do check out Ipsy's Facebook and website for our upcoming webinars because this uh, we have uh, four more webinars this semester. So thank you again for joining us today and we hope to see you again in the next webinar. Take care and have a great day everyone. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum salam. and thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Dr. Azai and Dr. Amirul. Yeah. Pleasure. Stay safe. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Bye bye. All the best. <laughs> yeah, all the best, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Datuk.